thank you all for coming. I don't know why you're here on this beautiful day. If I, I mean, we've been waiting for this weather in New York, and maybe one day it will come. <laughs> Uh, we are here in a darkened room to look at some pictures that are upstairs, and I hope you'll have an opportunity, if you haven't snuck in, to see these great photographs. Those of us who work in museums, of course, we, we believe in objects. The truth is in the actual thing itself, not just in the idea about the thing or whatever I might share with you or Lisa or anyone else. You know, our curatorial principle is that the, the, the experience that you have with the object doesn't need to be um, fettered. I don't think that's an actual word. Um, doesn't need to be um, uh, translated or modified or modulated. We all have the ability to see things and understand what they mean if we give ourselves that freedom. And I think one of the wonderful things that Helen Levitt did, um, as much as anybody else, is to allow us the privilege of seeing what is right there before our eyes. These everyday epiphanies that define our experience is there for all of us, each of us every day on every street corner. And one of the languages that Helen Levitt uses, which is sort of the documentary style, is just a style. She is not a photo reportage artist. She is finding those moments that come to her and maybe come to her alone, but each of us will find our own moments. So we're gonna have a really nice time. I hope I can answer some questions at the end of the presentation. And it's a pleasure to sort of dig and deep into Helen Levitt's experience with the camera at a certain moment in American culture. And I think I can bring it to life in this presentation, but the pictures have it in spades. So here's a picture that is being used by the museum as a kind of promotional experience. Creative play. What happens on the streets of New York? And where does one find meaning? What is the role of the artist in our society? It's a question I think about every day. The role of the artist in our society is to follow what they believe has meaning and to search for that meaning every day. If they find it and if they present it honestly, we too will find meaning. This is a picture that was made sometime between 1938 and 1945. Helen was born in Bensonhurst in Brooklyn. She dropped out of high school to follow her dream, which was photography. She worked in a studio for a portrait photographer, but realized that the meaning she was looking for, the pleasure of being a camera artist, was out on the streets of the city that she grew up in. She moved to Manhattan. She started meeting artists like Walker Evans, who was probably the most famous artist of his generation, and writers like James Agee. She hung around with a very heady crowd. You know, A.G. was that artist who worked with Evans on that book, Let Us Now Praise Famous Men, the Depression-era seminal documentary classic about tenant farming in Alabama, a Depression-era real masterpiece. They were friends, and when Helen met them, they started a relationship which sustained her. A.G. died in 55, but Evans lived throughout um, into the 70s, and these artists and Cartier-Bresson, Walker Evans' friend, James Agee's friend, became a guide to her to the possibilities of this medium. Let's just look at this. That is a picture of something that is purely photographic. What other medium can draw that picture? What other medium can do what this picture does? Look at this street scene around 1945. What are we looking at? the glance of one person observing another, a pregnant woman observing a non-pregnant woman holding jugs of milk in front of her. <laughs> what is that? What is that look? What is that experience? How did Helen Levitt find it? How did it come to her? What does it mean? It, it, is, it is a masterpiece of documentary expression, but it's a piece of lyric poetry. So is this one. Amazing picture, Halloween morning. These kids are their uh, old, older siblings or their parent, and pardon me, but I'm having to have some of this sweet tea. <laughs> With Savannah honey, I am told. Um, look at this, they step their first step on, a, on the morning of Halloween and look out at the world. What is the role of, of the camera? What does photography do? But it's about paying attention. It's about looking at things afresh. It's about unmasking and masking. And this, uh, this kid on the, on the top step, just putting the mask on to look out at the world. That kid on the left, that kid in the middle, is seeing what we're seeing, but from a different perspective. It's just a miracle of photography. So too this one. Where has humor gone? 
It's a question I ask every day. Contemporary art is humorless. Okay, most art is humorless. I believe that the best of our artists, and Helen Levitt is up there with the masters, all the way up there, in my opinion. She's not just here because Kathy Levitt lived here. She is not just here because there's a great collection at the Tell Fair. She's here because she is one of the great artists of the 20th century. Look at this misdirection. I love that. She is observing something that we cannot see, and Helen Levitt is observing her. This movement, this left-right dialogue, this gesture with the hose, with the camera, with the eyes, is a reminder that what? Seeing is a creative act. And if you don't believe that, the medium of photography is there to prove it over and over and over. What is this guy doing? <laughs> what is he doing? What's he doing? He's looking at himself in the reflection in the hubcap. OK. And he's trying to get his head to be either upside down or right side up. It's just fantastic. But look at that gesture. Helen Levitt really loved dance. And she understood how the body was this sort of poetic expression of what's inside reflected on the outside. This kid, you know, I don't even know if he has any pants on. OK. <laughs> I, I, you know, I can't tell, but we know he has shoes and socks on. And, and you know, everything counts in photography. What do I mean by that? You know, a painter paints on a canvas, and we know that everything counts because they chose everything that is there. So every gesture, every mark, every line, every color, every, every movement from one passage of the canvas to another is important. We have to address it. If it doesn't work, it's the painter's fault. Same for architecture. Everything that's part of every space we're in, including Moshe Softy's theater, is thought about. If it works, it's the artist's or architect's contribution to culture. If it fails, it's their failure. What about photography? Photographers have to be responsible for everything all the way through. That piece of cardboard is as much a part of the picture as the shoes that this kid is wearing, the ribs coming through the back of his shoulder, the reflections in the hubcap, the scene on the other side of the street, everything is important. And a photographer has a difficult time because he or she cannot go back. Painters, just paint it over. They can change the color. They can change everything. Photographers have to ma make the world conform to their understanding of it. Okay. How do you make this up? What? What, what, what is that? <laughs> These are the pleasures that are available to you upstairs. Now, listen, you know, our greatest tragedian, Shakespeare, was also our greatest comic writer. These are not lesser art forms. This is as important and as meaningful to me as this picture. Equally amazing. Look at the kids. There they are walking down the street. This is at 99th and Park Avenue in New York. I know this corner extremely well. This is just seven blocks from where Helen Levitt lived. She didn't have to go far to find her art. Every street corner, every street had the potential to have meaning. Look at them. They're growing up. They're at that liminal stage when they're leaving their childhoods and actually moving on in life. And they're looking, I would say, at these bubbles that are, in a certain sense, freer than they are. And they seem to recognize it. But look where the camera is. Look at the way, look how impossible this picture is to invent. And yet there it is. Look at the way it works. It's like musical notes. These are grace notes. And grace is something that Helen Levitt understood. And it's a little known thing. Here's James Agee writing in 1946. I think you can read it. Helen Levitt's photographs seem to me as beautiful, perceptive, satisfying, and enduring as any lyrical work that I know. In their general quality and coherence, moreover, the photographs as a whole body, as a book, seem to me to combine into a unified view of the world an uninsistent but irrefutable manifesto of a way of seeing. 
and in a gentle and wholly unpretentious way, a major poetic work of art. James Agee was the voice of his generation. He didn't mince words. This idea of a way of seeing, that each of us have a way of seeing and we're often afraid to share it. We are taught out of our way of seeing. This idea that she could penetrate the scrim of the culture to get past the superficialities at the heart of things, I believe partly was because she was a woman and she was not threatened and was not threatening to the community in which she worked. She was a white woman working in predominantly a Spanish and black community and she harvested from this street this unbelievable confluence of things and gestures and dance and she loved dance. It was life to her and it comes through in these pictures. I um, spoke to the Savannah College of Art and Design students in this auditorium earlier, and I talked a little bit about this picture, and I'll just mention it again tonight. Um, when I asked Helen about this picture, and she befriended me when I was 19 years old, when I was kind of like a kid on the street, and she gave me confidence to do what I'm doing. I wouldn't be here, this is not an exaggeration, I would not be here if it wasn't for Helen Levitt. And here I am, the head of a department at the Metropolitan Museum. But she told me about this picture when I was very young. I asked her about it. She said, well, I call it Uncle Ralph. I said, you know, why? She says, well, this guy reminds me of Uncle Ralph. And I've thought about it a lot. I don't know Uncle Ralph, but I asked Kathy Levitt if there was an Uncle Ralph. There isn't an Uncle Ralph. I don't know what that means, Kathy. But you know what? Here it is, Uncle Ralph. But look at the way this picture works. It's like a Bruegel to me. Look at the way those figures are um, presented. She often used a right angle finder. For those of us who have actually had a 35 millimeter in our hands, that is a, 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 an addition to the top of the camera so that the subject does not see you looking in the direction of the lens. It allows a kind of un um, self-critical way of responding to a figure. She was accepted because she was one of them and, she, and they knew it. But she used this right angle finder to get this close. When I tell my students and I share with them ideas about why their pictures aren't working, when I teach studio, it's often because they're too far away. They're not close enough. Look at how close she is in all of these pictures. What do we think about metaphor or allegory? These are things that are the vocabulary of literature but we have that in photography, a certain type of photography, and Helen Levitt is one. What is photography? It's pointing. It's showing us something by directing our attention. The medium of photography, the language of photography, is that simple respect for the real world, that the real world is as magical and as inventive as anything we can fabricate, anything that is artificial. Look at this picture. We've all studied classical art, and we know that on the facades of our most important temples from the Parthenon throughout Italy, we have these friezes. We have these figurative elements that are what? They are reflecting of real life. And here is real life imitating art, imitating life. They could not know those images, could they? And yet here they are. And this one kid on the on the, um, on the pillar looking at us, repeating and re uh, uh, mirroring the gaze of the camera. But look at this game. It's a pretty dangerous game, but it's an unbelievable photograph. Caring, Helen understood the touch was an amazing thing to show in a photograph. The caring and consoling and and providing of warmth and embrace by one person for another. It's one of those days that's so hot in New York, we're gonna have many more of them it seems, that um, they've opened up the fire hydrants. I think you can see that that's what's going on in the background. That's what's creating that unbelievable sort of spray of light. That's the actual water. And the kid has gotten wet or afraid and the mother or the older sister or a friend is going to care. That kind of touch and embrace is what I think Helen does in her art. Again, it's an allegory. 
look at these kids. She chose this for the cover of her book. She did not have a book. She worked from 1938 until 1945 and then stopped photography for the most part to make films, to edit others' films. She worked for people like Louis Bunuel. She edited and was a film cutter and was great at it, and she didn't pick up the camera until much later. Her first book was not until 1965. She chose this for the cover, and I'm just looking at it. Here she's not using the right angle finder, is she? No. More sweet tea. She's not um, using the right angle finder, and she wants those gestures. She wants to see those kids. What are they playing? What, what outfit are they, are they wearing? Foreign Legion? OK, so this is a World War II picture. They've stuck some of their parents' handkerchiefs in their caps, and they're paying legionnaires. Wonderful picture. In the background, I just say there's that graffiti. Helen was aware of the stage set that all of these games of play were enacted on. And here we are, again, a kind of metaphor, <laughs> um, a metaphor for photography. Uh, do you remember what Kodak, uh, George Eastman, used as the slogan for the very first camera? Do you remember what it was? Very close. You press the button, we'll do the rest. Exactly. This is the beginning of the snapshot moment of photography when the hands of the camera left the professionals and went into the amateur class. And we have that beginning of a real vernacular photography. But, but Helen saw graffiti we know about graffiti today, at a time when no one was paying attention to it, as a kind of modern, contemporary hieroglyph. And she interpreted them like an archaeologist. These modern types of hieroglyphs are magical. But I love this picture. And I love thinking about how she used the camera in every way. This is a picture, when I asked her what she called this one, she said, black cats. <laughs> so. <laughs> So I, I asked her about it a little bit further, and she said, when I saw these guys on the street, they were the coolest people I'd ever seen. And I knew how cool they were when this black cat went up and approached them. <laughs> and just look at this. You know, everybody has their own gesture. Every generation, old people gesture physically with their bodies differently than young kids. And these, um, these teenagers or young adults have their own slouch, the way they wear their hat, the way their pants are worn, and then there's that cat. She loved cats. We'll look at some more pictures in a second. Here's a wonderful picture, open lot picture of these kids playing on a, uh, basically a sandlot baseball field. I think you can see in the background the uh, store scoreboard painted with chalk or paint on the, on the wall. But this, um, this picture, A.G. just loved, and he wrote about in 1946 when he wrote for the book that didn't happen for another 20 years. He, he said, Helen's Levitt, Hel Helen Levitt's work may be called anti-journalism. This is important. This isn't journalism what she's doing. It's art. The example of it, in this case, Boys with Branches, was shot in Spanish Harlem in Manhattan. The picture is both a dance and a loving lyric. It would be hard to find anywhere off stage a scene that had more dance in it. To anyone sensitive to dance, this picture is inebriating. It is, of course, a lucky miracle of timing. But when you see an unbelievable confluence of chance in a photograph, remember that the operator was there, booted and spurred. Let's look at it again. What A.G. is talking about, which is a little bit of chance, is about the time element in photography, which is that the moment is over almost as, at, as soon as it begins. And our best artists have an ear for that. They become musicians. Our best artists have an eye for it. They become photographers. Our best artists combine these things, and they become poets or filmmakers. But our best artists have to understand that if you're not there, you're not there, and it's gone. And this is the challenge. This is the hardest thing about photography is presence. It's a sense of being there. You got to be in the game to play the game. Here she is. 
This is Helen Levitt by Walker Evans. It was made on a New York City subway in 1938 when they became friends and Helen was helping him print his great work, his New Deal photography for his first show at MoMA, which was called American Photographs. And when I acquired Walker Evans' archive, which was in 94, I'd been working on it for years, but when we finally brought it to the museum, I saw all 30,000 negatives and I came across this series of pictures made on the subway and as I was cataloging it, that's one by one, took me six years, I saw this picture, it's gonna make me cry. And I knew immediately who it was. And uh, I got on the subway, I went down to see Helen, and I showed her this picture. She said, that's not me. <laughs> and, and I said, you sure? She said, no, that's not me. I, I, I would never have worn that coat. So, uh, so, so, okay, so I said, uh-huh, and she humored me. She poured me a glass of sherry, which she did when I visited her, and she said, you know, Jeff, it really is. So, this is Helen Levitt. No one messed with her. She had that set jaw. She spoke like a sailor. She taught me how to be a New Yorker, and I'm a plowboy from Missouri. And she took me to Coney Island for the first time. She knew every barker. She was the thing. She was the greatest artist I knew in photography. And I must say, she taught me everything I know, really, about street photography.